All right, next up on the bench, an Onkyo TXSR606. Looks like an AV receiver. Power light's blinking because I already tried to power it up once. Power's up. Shuts down. Power up. Shuts down. So, let's get into this guy. See what might be going on in this thing. Onkyo high current power supply. Well, I would have to say so. Let's go ahead and take a look in here real quick. I'm going to turn this around and I'm show you the heat sink right here with all the power transistors on it. So first and foremost, I just want you to look at the color of the screws that hold these power transistors to the heat sink. Tell me when you see something abnormal. Look at those two right there. The screws have changed color, they've been so hot. Plus, check this out. So that's an MP130S. I'm not sure what the number of that one is. There's a hole blown in the front of it. But it's on one of the two that has the discolored screws. Also, looking down here at the circuit board, look at the color of the circuit board right there compared to the pair next to it and the rest of them. Circuit board's not discolored anywhere but those two transistors. Even these over here, the circuit board's much lighter in color. So I'm just going to go out on a limb and say we got a bad set of transistors over here. More than likely caused by a defective speaker or a bad wire. I mean, they put up a fight for a good long time before they actually blew up. For the heck of it, let's get an ohmmeter out and just check collector to emitter on these two and see if they might be shorted. Okay, so I have the voltmeter set up over here in the diode range. And so if I short my leads together, it should beep and read zero. So first thing, I'm going to check the emitter resistor right here. Hopefully you can see this. That side's good. That side's open. So it blew the emitter resistor open on the right hand side. Let's bend that back out of the way so you might have a chance of seeing something down here. So if I check collector to emitter on this transistor, I get 0 0.005. That's actually a voltage drop. Five one thousandths of a volt drop. Let's go back to ohms. 5.6 ohms. Let's check the other transistor. Point four ohms, which is probably about what the leads are shorted together. Yeah. So let's just go back to the diode range and I kind of doubt there's going to be any other problems in here, but that, and all I'm looking for is either an open or a diode junction. I'm just gonna have to bend these down out of the way. So far what I'm seeing is absolutely perfect for the rest of these. And get on to the leads. There we go. And all the rest of these test absolutely perfectly. Nothing wrong with those at all. So the next question is what else might have been damaged when this happened? So on this heat sink right here, you'll see this little transistor with heat sink compound on it. And they've actually, I think they've milled a slot. Yes, they have. They milled a slot into the heat sink. And this is the bias tracking transistor. As the transistor heats up and cools down, changes the bias to keep it more or less where it needs to be. Because as semiconductors heat up and cool down, their junction level changes. So they need to have a tracking device on here to keep the bias correct because we don't want to over bias it and create more and more heat. And we don't want to under bias it and create distortion. Then we turn it into a class C amplifier instead of a class AB amplifier. 
So more than likely, we're looking at a set of replacement transistors. I'd probably replace that bias tracking transistor as well, and then maybe the driver transistors as well. I'll have to try to test those if I can. There are those two. They're standing up right here. They're a TO220 plastic case right here. You can just barely see them. And I think there might be another bias tracking transistor in between them. I see a little white glob. It might just be some kind of uh, celastic in there to keep them upright, keep them from jiggling around. But let's go ahead and try to test those real quick. Well, there's no really practical way to do this. So I still, I'm on the diode range here and I'm gonna check from collector to emitter and I get one one thousandth of a volt drop. Let's go to ohms and I see 0.6 ohms across that one driver. So it is definitely bad. So it's gonna need a set of drivers, a set of output transistors, and there are some low value. More than likely they've been smoked as well. Let's go ahead and check those real quick. I take that back. A 0.22 ohm, it reads 0.06, 2.5 ohms. I can't really get to this driver right here to test it very well. There is a transistor in between it, so I'm gonna have to pull a schematic and see what parts might be required and see if the customer is going to go for the repair. So reason being, I need to quote this to the customer, it's probably gonna be a fairly labor intensive job because you can't get access to this like on the old receivers. The whole circuit board and probably the transformer and everything has to come out of the unit because there's the bottom of the unit. There's no access. It's a one piece stamped frame. So like on the older units, they used to have a either a cutout or the whole bottom cover came off. Well. That cost a few extra cents to manufacture, so they did away with that. Now to do any service, the back panel has to come off. Every screw back here has to be removed to be able to gain access. And there's multiple, multiple layers of circuit boards. Might be kind of hard to see, but there's a circuit board right here. There's a circuit board here. Speaker terminal circuit board, all that's got to come out just to get access to the parts here. So I think I'm gonna leave it at that. This is gonna be part one. I'm gonna quote the customer and see if they wanna go with the repair. So just based on the nomenclature that's on the circuit board, they actually have some labels down here, kind of hard to see, but it's got the surround back right and left channels here, the surround right and left channels here, the front right and left channels here, and then the center channel right in the center. So this is the surround right. So I'm gonna recommend that the customer bring their surround right speaker in and have them verify their wiring integrity, make sure the leads aren't touching, something like that. Because I don't believe that this was just a normal failure. These things have been driven hard and generated a lot of heat, even though it's on a pretty big, beefy heat sink back here. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this quick little diagnostic portion of the video. With any luck, there will be a part two. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. While you're down there, go ahead and click that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this diagnostic video. I really do appreciate it. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.